really dominating that early game, but can play yep. patiently as they go late. Okay, Cassiopeia ban against GBM, and there's that Callista ban against Arrow. All right. Rek'Sai banned out, so that means Chaser will play Jarvan, right? Hopefully not. And there's the LeBlanc ban. Yeah. This yeah, you really you can't let KT have that. Urgot still up. Thresh still up as well. Zareth will be taken away. Now, given everything we just saw in the last game, that's a little bit of an interesting ban. Yeah. Or is it with the LeBlanc not available? Do you feel like they can only handle it with the with the LeBlanc? No. No, 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 no. I think that mostly they're scared because if Chaser has a better early game and GBM isn't the only member on his team that's ahead, then that game might have gone very differently. Urgot ban. So there's the Urgot ban last. Do you take KT Rolls or could first pick Sivir here? And where they can first pick the Cannon again. So right. they're really mixing it up. KT, interestingly, week to week, seems to have a different priority pick. Yeah. Last week it was that Sivir that they took in the first round of both of their games. This time it's Cannon. So if you're Jin Air now, what do you go with? Maybe Sivir Maokai, Sivir Sejuani, or just, or just Jarvan. Just Jarvan it, Monty. Just Jarvan. I'm so sick of seeing Jin Air play this Jarvan. Just Jarvan. And you have to imagine they're probably going to lock it in. Hopefully we'll see something a bit different. But again, the thing you have to keep in mind through all of this is Jin Air has absolutely zero incentive to show anything new in this match. That's true. They really, but they really shouldn't. They wouldn't be showing a whole lot by playing Sejuani here. I know that Chaser likes to have some good early ganks, and indeed that's one of his strengths is how good his ganking is well, and Chay how he Chaser. can really get his lane ahead. Yeah. I mean, Che on that Annie, he and Chaser have been able to get a lot of good ganks, especially in mid lane done. So it looks like this time it's going to be a mid or a support cannon. Taking away that Hecarim? Yeah. I wonder. And an early Kog'Maw as well. Now that, that pick does cause a lot of problems for Sivir in lane with the range disparity. Kog'Maw can be quite the bully in terms of poking. You know, Lulu is still available. So if they send Lulu top and send Kennen support, they could be putting together a little bit of a Juggermaw composition, although a little bit different of one than we've seen before. Kennen, Kennen can also, yeah, that's true. That's true. We'll see. Although we'll I'm see. not a big fan of running Juggermaw with Lulu mid because I, I feel at that point you lack another damage threat. Yeah, Although that hasn't Hecarim, worked out too well. Hecarim is a, a good champion if you are going to do that style, but I think generally running a tank in top lane in Lulu mid is a little too aggressive. You usually want something like, like a LeBlanc or even another AD carry in the mid lane to help at least deal some more supplemental damage. Well, GBM's Lulu is really good too, so you may want to take it away there. I'm a little bit disappointed that we're not going to see Chase Andy this game. I think it's extremely good, and I think it would have worked in very, very well with a, a Sivir composition. I mean, Janna does too, but I like his Annie. I think Jyn Air may be setting up for a mid, mid Ezreal here. Well, that wouldn't be too surprising, would it? Come on, do it. Oh. Not yet, 5.7. Then I think we're going to see some Bard. We've seen Bard in China in 5.6. It just hasn't been great. Yeah. So I think most people are shying away from it. You need a, you and need a few that more fresh available with the Sejuani. So huge engage potential coming in for KT. Yeah. Fixer on Thresh, too. It's going to be pretty tough. And if GBM takes this fly, I'd be a bit worried. Could take the Zed. Yeah. That would be Have a ninja battle in the mid lane. Of course, GBM always been a great Zed player, but yeah, maybe a bit of split we, we haven't we haven't seen it in quite some time. But against that Kog'Maw, Zed is very effective. Yeah. And they don't have the best peel either. Hmm, Lissandra, do you feel like that's going to do enough damage later on? I'd be concerned if again I think pigeonholes Jin Air into having a powerful mid game. Yeah. Of course, they've always left Jarvan Rumble. Small I mean, windows. it's a good composition, but with the tank meta, the windows that you can get the appropriate burst down are smaller than ever. It's not that you can't do it; it's that now there is added risk to doing it. Well, at this point, you just really have to do it perfectly if you're yep. going to do it. And even for the top teams, that is not easy. Looks like it will be Lissandra though for Gank by Mom. All right, so there's our compositions. 
I gotta say, just looking at these teams, I'm, I'm feeling it for KT. I'm feeling it for KT as yeah. well, but this Kog'Ma is going to be vulnerable in the early game. It will be possible if Jynair can get good equalizers and get a Lissandra flank to really make plays onto Arrow. Yeah. Before that QSS or the Crucible comes down, Jynair, as long as GBM can find a good angle, he can get in because KT just doesn't have the best peel against that with Hecarim, Sejuani, and and Kennen. These are champions that are going to be going into the enemy team, not hanging around by Kog'Maw to peel. Right. So, Jynair has good engage. They can hit that back line, but they have to make it work before really the tankiness overtakes them because this Hecarim is going to be a threat that they don't have the tools to deal with. They can't deal with a split-pushing Hecarim in the late game. Yep. It's not going to happen. No one's going to be able to be there to keep him from pushing down turrets with the Trinity Force. It's going to be pretty tough to go through it. And so KT going back to uh, something similar to what they've used to do so well in recent weeks here. There's a lot of engage. You know, how will Arrow be on that Kog'Maw? And will Jynair hit that narrow window to lock up KT and get some mid-game team fight wins? Time to find out. This could be the final game of the season for KT Rolster. Let's see if they can close it out 2-0. It's time to get in the game. Monsters. It's happening. Someday has taken Smite. Oh, okay. So uh, we've seen this uh, from Flandre on Snake in the LPL uh, with Shivana, and also again in that Impulse versus Gravity series. And this is really quite strong right now. So Someday is going to be sacrificing some of his lane presence that you would get with the Ignite Hecarim in order to start doing some counter jungling and to uh, sweep out some of his camps. And so basically, you're not going to be as strong in the 1v1 early, but you certainly are going to be much more powerful in the late game. You're going to get Red Smite into Cinder Hulk. You're going to get tankier, and you're also going to have uh, the Gromp buff, the Gift of the Toadstool, and that does ridiculous damage to AD carries. Man, and when he comes in late game and just smites Pilot with that Skirmisher Saber, it takes 20 less damage. Well, good luck. Good luck, Saber. Yep. It's going to be pretty tough to handle that. And even when he does auto, as long as he's good about getting that Gromp buff, mm -hmm. Saber is going to be dealing an insane amount of damage to herself. Yeah. So. Very true. Very strong. And someday just going to solo out the Gromp right away. Yep, he certainly can. He's got that smite. So this is going to be the first use of top lane smite with Hecarim in the professional scene. So we'll see how this goes. Yeah, first I, it's, a, it's a natural choice, obviously. People already running Hecarim without a movement summoner. First top lane smite in uh, Korea as yep. well, just in general. So teleport up to the top lane, so somebody's going to get a pretty strong start. As we said, and it looks like the duo going mid for KT now, wanting to avoid that bot lane of uh, Pilot and Shay, which can't really blame them. Yeah, you get such a nice level advantage too. Yeah. Uh, Trey's level two right now. He did help Leash over at that Gromp, but it's one more way for you to get ahead. And you can really build up pretty phenomenal uh, CS differentials with the help of this Smite. You can also just go ahead and take their red buff if you're on this blue side. And of course, we have the two in mid lane as well. So very interesting situation here as Kennen, of course, easily able to handle a 1v2 lane. Having two smites is probably going to be pretty nice for objectives as well. Yep. It's pretty, pretty great right now. Interesting. All right. I'm, I'm actually excited about this. I don't know, I, I like seeing summoners used in kind of unconventional ways like this. Yeah, Score coming in. You're excited about it now, but it's going to take over the meta, though. And we'll all be <laughs> well, a lot less last. excited. It's yeah. definitely not going to last. Well, you I, can, I'm sure that... It's going to be lasting through at least 5.7. I would imagine Rito's not terribly pleased with this, <laughs> this development here. 
But oh, uh, Nagne, he may not be pleased with this development. Oh, they missed the engage. And that was a flash whirlwind from Che as well. That's just bad. Yeah, that was. You don't want a flash whirlwind like that. It's really difficult to hit, especially against a Kennen who has that E. It was easily well, avoidable. You already have Jarvan coming in for Fixer's the knockup. That sets up a very easy whirlwind. And yeah, Fixer coming down now. So yeah, Che, that, that whirlwind was definitely unnecessary. You've got your support support, Jarvin, to help get the first engage. Just follow it up. And the Fixer's win rate, 83.3% so far with that Thresh. Yep. He is uh, so pretty much a monster on that. He's 5-1. and one. Yeah. yeah, just hitting so many just crucial hooks in team fights. Things Someday like controlling his own crap. Why not? When you've got Smite in the top lane, you can do that. <laughs> it's great. It is great. You just get so much extra money too once you get that once you get that uh, scimitar. Right. Somebody just being as annoying as possible. Yeah, score, score coming here. up as well too. This could be yeah, Trace just walking right through, but kind of a scary moment for him. Yeah, and this wow. is really good Bating by KT. With two smites, because they have two people in the mid lane, they have control over the jungle, actually, on both sides. And that means that they can use these two smites even more effectively. This is a brilliant strategy from KT coming in. I really like what they're doing here with the cannon, with the uh, the Kogma in the mid lane. You're able to get a lot of hits onto GBM's Lissandra. Mm -hmm. Well, KT just, again, you know, continuing to play things even smarter. Kind of kind of makes you wish they were going to the playoffs, huh? It w You know, it was so weird for KT, too, because they had such a good uh, preseason. And then coming in to the regular season just kind of fell flat. Nobody was able to really make plays. They didn't seem to know what to do outside of 20 minutes. Well, I mean, it's... Man, it's, they've turned it around. Yeah, and this is a team that, remember, we've... A lot, due to the, the exodus of a lot of the Korean players around yeah. the world, every team, for the most part, had to try and reinvent themselves, score, of course, changing positions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, going from AD carry up to jungle. And score coming in. Oh, a little bit of damage on to Jay. Fixers right there. Death sentence on to Chaser. They're going to get the teleport, actually, from Jin Air. And will this end up bad for Fixer? He has to flash over the wall. More damage first. Blood going to Pilot. So KT getting a bit caught there. Jin Air score turning it around. Can't take that engagement when someday's teleport is down. That's just really sloppy team communication. They're going to give up a dragon for it, actually, as well. Yeah, it seems like just a bit of laziness from uh, KT there. Yeah, there's no way you take that fight. Sure, you have the duo lane in mid, but with their support there as well, you're even in terms of numbers, and it was just all too easy. So a dragon given up right there, as well as that first blood. Now, Someday is going to continue to get a farm advantage as a result, but... Yeah, he's getting a pretty decent one, too. So for now, this is going to put a little bit of pressure on Detrace. Oh, Nagne and score. Nagne is six. Lurking in the bot lane. And this is pretty huge, too, that Nagne has actually been able to stay relevant in terms of CS, or at least keep up with GBM in the longer lane. And looks like they're not going to take that bait. Score will have to back off this, or maybe he'll try and auto the turret alongside Nagne. Maybe. I mean, with both summoners still up for pilot, if he was still down there, I don't think that gank would have would have worked out. A little bit of chipping damage from KT on the mid lane turret as well. So Skirmisher Saber already up. Actually, that's a pretty fast buy for Skirmishers. Hmm. Not getting Bami Cinder before completing the machete item. But again, it's, it is about that smite if you're going to continue to try and starve out the enemy jungler. But they haven't really been successful at that yet. Chaser not falling behind in terms of CS yeah. at the very least. But we're only seven minutes into this game. We'll see how that lead opens up. Someday's going to take a trot through the enemy jungle right now after pushing it under turret. Well, I suppose you're going to be getting that extra gold from clearing out any jungle camp, so it's a really nice little substitute when you push that lane yep. up. And it lets you make plays on other lanes, too. 30 extra gold every time you take that scuttler as well. Yeah. It's pretty huge for KT. It's very big. It's uh, not too far off from a cannon minion. That extra gold. Yep. Combined with the regular gold, it's more than a cannon, yeah. minion, but just the extra stuff is the stuff that you should be happy about with this top lane smite and the skirmisher saber machete item. Yeah, that's the thing that's deceptive too is yeah, we only see that eleven CS difference, but that's not accounting for the fact that some of that CS is worth a lot more yeah, that's the thing. than some of what Trace is getting. Yeah, arrow. 
Doing well in CS in the mid lane as well, too. They've gotten more damage onto their uh, turret than GBM has been able to do. Yeah, not particularly surprising. Lissandra no. still has to get pretty close to use her abilities, so yeah. she, uh, she wants to farm a little bit further back at this stage, unless she gets overly poked out. Yeah, and I feel like KD... Arrow know, also going for, actually, Berserker's Greaves first here, along with the sustain, so really, this is just about fast pushing. That's what KT's trying to do, get as many autos down and just continue to shove the wave. And they have to keep shoving the wave too because that's what opens up the jungle for scoring someday. And Agne still keeping up in CS in the bot lane. This is a really smart strategy that KT is running. And you know, after seeing some of these games for the past week, you look at Snake's play, and they got a big advantage due to the lane swap and the fact that Shivana could jungle very efficiently while the enemy top laner couldn't. But they didn't do a whole lot with the lead, and it wasn't... The, the basic idea was good, but this is far more refined. Yeah, as long as well, score. Oh, he misses the ult. Oh, man, and he could be in a little bit of trouble. Well, just taking some damage on the way out. Honestly, it didn't. he shouldn't have fired that ult in the first place. Yeah. There was no follow-up there, even if he had hit it. You know, that was another occasion in this game already where score has gone just a, a little bit too crazy trying to make picks. Yeah, I think that... I think KT is just happy taking this late, though. Oh, Jim Air. GBM coming in. Fixer just gets blown up by Chaser and ganked by Mob. And that's Fixer's second death now. A really clean gank from Jin Air. Yeah, knowing score was in the bottom side, so there yep. wasn't going to be retaliation. They also had wards around the mid lane to give them that early warning, so nice play from Chaser. And GBM has a lot of damage going for a fast, easily large rod. Yeah. It's interesting. I mean, KT's been playing very intelligently, but Jin Air's just been kind of getting the kills when they needed them. GBM's been doing a very good job, not going for the Seeker's Arm Guard first in this attack damage lane, instead playing it cool, although Arrow isn't hitting particularly hard in terms of his single damage, like his single auto poke, just oh, because of just his build. Yeah, yeah. So. It's not the, the greatest threat, of course, for GBM here either. True enough. Someday with a really nice CS lead up in top. You know, again, like you mentioned, a lot of that CS worth more than the stuff Trace has been getting too. Yeah, this is going to be quite scary to deal with. And I'm very curious if someday he's going to be building into this Cinder right now. Of course, he could go Trinity Force after the Saber. Yeah. Um, I'm not... I. We need to keep an eye on his, his pathing path because it is going to tell us a lot about what he wants to do and when he wants to do it. Because if anything, this build, the downside to using it on Hecarim is it does slow down his Trinity Force power spike where he can really eliminate the back line very easily. Yeah. That's interesting. You know, do you just stop at the... Uh, okay, so he did go ahead and pick up Cinder Hulk just now. Yeah. Also, and Merc Trits too. Yeah, well. Nice his, buy. Yeah, his damage is also just going to be lower in general because, of course, a lot of Hecarims prefer to get that tier two boots for the damage from his passive mm -hmm. and then try and use the the uh, home guard as well as soon as possible to get into some of these mid game fights. So right. it does make Hecarims more dependent on scaling into the late game. But if you want to do that, it's perfectly fine here because you have all of the pressure advantage at the moment. You know, with the way Someday has been getting in and juggling too, I don't think his Trinity Force is going to be all that slowed down. He's been getting so much extra gold. Well, I'm curious what he wants to go next because he does have some good, That's a good question. wave clear right now with the Bami Cinder and True. the Sunfire Aura that comes from that. Hmm, can Jin Air take a dragon here? They've got a couple wards, but with teleports up, might be a little bit risky. And no ult for Trace yet, or at the moment anyway, so they may want to give it a couple seconds. Yeah, someday, the level advantage as well. Yep. And there we see the orb used to suss out Score's location, so he's not going to be finding a lane gank, at least at present. You know, it's too bad he wasn't able to pick up Cinder Hulk for this dragon fight in case they do it. Do you think they're just going to give it away to Jin Air? No, I, I don't think anybody's actually in a good position to hmm. go for this dragon right now. This pilot 
Bell Shield's at at the moment. Kogma trying to get back into the mid lane to clear out the wave. It looks like you will for now. Going for a Blade of the Rune King, it looks like, as his first big item. So again, I mean, we talked about how KT's other champions are not going to be sitting back and peeling for Kogma. They're going to be going into the other team. So, you know, as Arrow, Arrow on that Kogma, he's going to need a little bit of self peel. So that blade, not too surprising, I suppose. Yeah. Also just matching up with some more attack speed so he can continue to push turrets down. Yeah. And you can see someday really just not providing pressure yet. And that's one of the issues with going for a double Cinder Hulk is you know, it's, a da it's an item that scales really nicely because of its multiplicative stats, but it's just not quite as efficient early in the game. And Jyn'Air going to take this dragon finally. Yep, just going to give that one up, looks like. Uh, yeah, going for it. There we go. So Jyn'Air does get dragon number one. It does make sense. Again, KT, yeah. they don't have to be particularly worried about that right now because they're going to be so terrifying in the late game. Ryan, they haven't given Jyn'Air too much of an early lead. Those two kills are kind of a little bit irritating. And the fact that Jyn'Air has uh, two dragons already. Yeah, but the CS really making up in terms of the gold differential for those kills. And oh, yeah. Also the fact that they have a lot more turret damage right now to and work with right here. You know, again, all that extra gold onto Sunday as well, too, is making the uh, gold totals a lot more similar than you would normally think they'd be. Yeah, Chaser doing a good job jungling around this sticky situation, though. He's managed to continue to farm very efficiently. Scores has been waiting a little bit too much to get ganked. Oh, on. whoa, GBM. Wow, he actually... Sejuani on the back end. That'll be it. Arrow gets the kill there. Ooh, GBM tried to survive it, but nice gank from KT. I hope we'll get to see a replay of that one. Weird flash from Arrow right there. GBM actually did a great job of using the frozen tomb on himself to dodge yeah. the glacial prison. So many ice tomb prison words here, but uh, yeah. Death igloo. Cause that waiting <laughs> for that one. That one hasn't been used yet. Feel free, Rido. Rido? Rido? I tried to say Riot and Rido at the same time, and then Rido. <laughs> Sounds like a motorci motorcycle riding dog, but uh, it's not. I don't know what it is. <laughs> okay, let's see. A great hook from Fixer. Yeah. Whoa. And look at that. You know, I guess it's not Last surprising. Dodge. It's not surprising. Fixer is the guy who makes these kind of plays on Thresh all the time. Not sure Arrow had to flash for that one, but you know, better safe than sorry, I guess. Yeah, kill secured, right? All right, so not, our score finally has his jugger, Juggerma, Jugger, <laughs> his uh, jug, Cinderhawk. What in the world am I talking about? All right. I don't know what you're doing right now. I don't buddy. know. I saw a Kogma. <laughs> I was thinking about Jungle and Chance. The Juggermaw enchant. That's a GE he has. The whole team. Okay, so now Someday is going to be going for the Trinity Force. So really, he's going to split push even faster with this build. Thanks to Cinder Hulk. Will be pretty scary to deal with. And again, Jyn'Air doesn't have anybody to stop this guy in the late game. He will have a field day split pushing against Jyn'Air's team composition. Pretty much. And now Sheen finished as well, so Arrow really looking to mow through these turrets. Good move though, so you'll notice that they put Rumble against Kennen, who has a Zonia's Hourglass, so they want to be a little bit more bully, and they put the duo lane up against Someday. So this is a smart lane allocation by Jin Air to counteract the weaknesses presented by KT's itemization at this point in time. Yeah. I tried to make Maybe the possibility of a play happen in the top lane. But KT was wise to it. And it's it's just kind of, we're, we're rolling towards this inevitable moment where someday we'll just run over everybody. Yep, that's, that's where we're yep. going, Dola. That's uh, pretty much what's going to happen. Because Jin Air, you know, they've had a couple cool picks early on, but they just have not been able to slow down someday at all on this Hecarim. Yeah, they really have to pray they get the next couple of dragons here. Yeah. It's gonna come back to haunt them. They can play very, a very good vision game and poke someone out or pick somebody off with Lissandra and Rumble. And I mean, granted, Jyn Air has this very powerful mid game and they will be able to deal with the back line. Kogma immobile, no sign of a Crucible coming anytime soon, of course, from Thresh. So they're in a pretty good position. 
But now the towers are starting to fall from KT as they, they've been chipping pretty mercilessly at them for most of this game so far. Yeah, pretty much. Although this top tower, after that last wave pushed in by Pilot and Shea, they got a lot of work done and looks like they're gonna have to give up top tower for, the, for their pressure on bottom. Yeah, well, I think as long as someday can just continue to farm the, the jungle, he'll be okay. Wow. Nognet coming in, there's a stun onto Trace. Oh, he dodges the hook. Nice move from Trace. Oh, and the flay not connecting. Fixer just barely out of range. You don't see him miss those very often, do Fixer you? Fixer flashed over that. However, yeah, we Sejuani ult still available, but they're going to have to back off of this one. They don't want GBM coming in right now. Wow. Two flashes used right there, Nognet and Fixer. Very uncharacteristic trace on the skill shots from Fixer. Yeah, Trace had a nice juke there, though. Yeah, he did. It wasn't very well coordinated. F Fixer there too late to take advantage of the cannon stun, so Trace able to dodge around it. Yep. Looks like Nagne almost has that abyssal either way. Trace not even having to use the equalizer right there. That's, huh. that's, a, that's pretty calm. Trace is a very cool and collected player. Yeah, generally is. Someday now, going on a jungle mission. See Trace make an amazing play, and you know it looks like somebody told him what the uh, the high and low temperatures of the day were going to be. <laughs> He's got the same reaction. He's like, "Oh, okay." Never smiling. Yeah. They let him know his mail has arrived, and there's nothing interesting in it. It's just bills. And he's like, "Ah, oh, oh, okay." Here we go. More jungles camps taken by someday. Getting 50 CS ahead now. I know. I mean, this is getting really <laughs> scary. With the CS lead that Someday already has. Yeah, there's oh, the Trinity geez, Force. He just got it. He, he has is. Trinity Force and Cinder Hulk at 20 minutes into this game. This is a fast farming Hecarim here. Holy wow. cow. A he's, full, a full like 18, he's like almost 2,000 gold ahead of yeah, Trace. 1,800. He's even 600 Jeez. gold ahead of Pilot, who's yeah. the 80 carry. Good push, though, from Jin Air. They do get the mid tower down. Mm -hmm. Right as this dragon comes live. Who's going to stop this Hecarim, though? I mean, with Trinity Force, he's going to do so much damage. Well, Pilot at least has a Bloodthirster first. And I think yeah. this is a smart adaptation in this particular scenario where you are going to be subject to some pretty heavy diving. KT sneaks into the dragon, however. Yeah, well, the teleport as they clear coming out down. The mid -wave. All right, teleport used for Trace. They just let KT walk right into the river. Yeah, it cost them the they, teleport on their top laner. Too. They sent so many people to just clear out mid. All right, here we go. Dragon activated by KT. They're going to go for it. Trace looking for a good equalizer. Is he going to throw one down? It looks like he has GBM coming in as well. Dragon goes over to KT. Oh, they grab GBM with the Death Sentence into the box. They're going to blow him up. Another great play from Pixar. Someday coming in with that onslaught of shadows. Doesn't really get anybody with it, but Dragon in the mid laner, I think KT can be pretty happy with how that turned out. And GBM had no time to even use his ult or his Zonia's yeah. Hourglass right there. Caught out with the Sichuani ult and it's some great chaining of CC from KT. And that is a lot of damage coming in, as we said, from Someday hitting the charge right onto GBM. Now he's after the blue buff. I don't oh, think anyone can geez. stop that. This They're going to take mid lane turret, too. This top spite <laughs> is really monstrous. On Hecarim, man, it's just so scary. Takes a while to get rolling, but once it does. So let's take a look at this one again. So GBM in the front right there gets hooked. Great wow. hook from Fixer. And then immediately just gets hit by a Sejuani ultimate right there. GBM has no time to do anything. Yep, once that death sentence landed, it was over. It was literally death sentence. Which wow. it oftentimes is from Fixer. Someday's playing farm the entire map right now. <laughs> it's like, I get to play jungler this game. <laughs> Only people don't yell at me. Scores so like, oh, that's why I'm falling behind in terms of CS, because you take all my camps. Yep. But it's okay, because maybe he'll take towers for you too. He gives gold back. Yeah. By taking global objectives. Hecarim taketh, but then he sometimes gives back a little bit. Wow, he does a lot of damage to turrets too. Yep. Some damage to pretty much everything at this point. Yeah, you know, why don't you just give him some extra gold? The isolated damage takedown on that turret means he picks yeah. up even more for himself. Yeah, why not? He's actually nearing the flame horizon on this uh, smite hecker. It's a lot easier to do when you have smite though. 
It's not true. as impressive. The Flame Horizon is, has less of a glow about it, though. Uh, when well, 100 CS ahead, yeah. It's, it's not just in top lane. It's mostly top lane, but I would say like two-thirds top lane, one-third jungle at this point. You know what else is great about this? Is somebody can just take blue buff all he wants because yep. Nogne's been in this bottom lane. He's an energy-based champion, so great composition from KT. Yeah. I think they've done such a good job of playing this one. Man, it's it's really a pity that we're not going to get to see them play for a long time. Yeah, why are they so good all of a sudden? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is by the time they play in actual competition again, the meta will have shifted. <laughs> so enjoy it while it lasts, guys. It's like the only time. To KP's be fair, be able to do no, this. no, that's not fair. They were doing well before 5.5 <laughs> as well. They were starting to kind of. They've had. They starting actually. Starting to sort of get. Rolling. They actually have had a very good uh, second half of the season. That is true, but. It remains true as well that by the time we're going to see him again, the game will have shifted. So, <laughs> will they be able to shift with it? Or we could just be in for a whole other year of, of uh, tank meta. As long as we don't get back to the, the quadruple heal Mundo comps. Oh, God. <laughs> Mid Soraka with Mundo. We always were afraid back in the day, you know, remember that it might be a Mundo versus Mundo top lane in these blind pick matches sometimes. Luckily, it never happened, but it could have. It could have happened. And that's enough to keep me up at night sometimes. Well, KT just continuing to push this advantage, and nobody in Korea has really had to deal with this yet. So I'm sure they have in scrims. Lucky Air, yeah, in scrims, but not in not in a competitive match. Great pressure from KT. Yeah. You see right there, someday we just swept through the entire top top side jungle looking for. He was actually on the hunt for red buffs right there. Oh, it's, it's empty either way when he's done with it. Yeah. It continues just to be this incredible pushing force of that blue buff, never running yep. out of that mana. Not sure exactly how Trace is going to stop him. He's getting close to getting that spirit visage. Yeah, I don't think he really can. He probably just, I mean, he could definitely 1v1 Trace right now with the smite. Instead, he's like, are there any jungle camps for me to farm? <laughs> so okay. I'll go on solo Baron at some point in the near future. He's going to go back to my jungle. Because uh, it is his jungle, it's not scores anymore. <laughs> yeah, topside jungle belongs to someday. I guess so. These are my wolves. Top lane means like top half of the map now. <laughs> Look at that. And just the fact that he's getting all this extra gold because of the skirmisher saver. It's crazy. It's disgusting. Yeah, 30 extra gold for every big camp like that. Think of how many he's taken. I bet he's nearing 3k ahead on Trace right now. I bet he's pretty close. A distortionate chant for Nogde here. Nogde's yep. only purpose in life is to be a stun bot, so <laughs> Subne can carry at the moment. He's like, I have to have Flash up all the time. Hey, if you've, if you've played Annie, you know what life as a stun bot is yeah. like. <laughs> you stunned him, you got one rotation of cooldowns, good, you can die now. Thanks for being in the team fight. <laughs> Thanks for playing. Yep. Even Arrow getting a QSS as his third item here. It's all about someday. I guess so. Should change his name to today. Because that's when he's going to carry. Yeah, that's right. All about right now. Should just go ahead and just go all out and change his name to Showtime. <laughs> Why not? It's Showtime. Well, Here he comes. mid lane push coming in from Jin Air. Ooh, they spot someday. They spot Showtime coming through the river there. <laughs> Blue buff taken yep. for Kogma, so KT continues to be all over Jin Air's buffs. Oh. All right, nobody wants uh -oh. to try to catch that uh -oh. oh, here they go. Speeding up. Doing a decent amount of damage to him. Red spite used on GBM right there. Yeah, it's going to be down for like another two seconds. <laughs> Yeah, the double charge on Smite really makes this even crazier, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it does. It's like it doesn't even matter. He's like, oh, I've got Smite again already. More true damage for you. Yep. All right, well, it's Dragon time. KT camping out by the Dragon Dome. And everybody's in the brush. Oh, boy. Oh, here we go. Score! Nice! Oh! And here comes the Onslaught of Shadows! Oh boy, that was messy. And just like that, it's showtime. That was <laughs> dirty. That was. Wow, score's like, I can't even believe I did that. I can't believe they died so fast. I guess it's time for Baron. Pilot 
Didn't even have a chance to spell shield right there. No, he was just instantly dead. The fact is they got both carries. They got GBM and Pilot. No Zonias, no oh, time man. for the Frozen Tomb. Nothing, just instant death from the damage that Someday was putting out too after he used that Onslaught of Shadows and then yeah. rampaging in the middle of them. Oh, Chaser gets grabbed, knocking it over the wall. Who said Stunbot? He's a stone cold killer. And of course, Someday picks up the Baron <laughs> with that smite. <laughs> Score is like, wow, I'm, I'm out of a job, aren't I? <laughs> now, you hit a good ult in that last team fight. Well, it wasn't really much of a fight. It was like an assassination, more like. Now I'm really sad that we're not going to see KT for like another two months, though. No, I know, right? They've been playing so well. They tease us. They tease us. Like, this is especially bad for you, as you you know <laughs> have been known as a KT fan throughout your, your casting career here. Must be hard, man. I'm sorry. I feel sorry for you. It's OK. I'm, I'm used to disappointment, though. I, you know, I've been an SKT fan, so I'm not, not quite <laughs> as used to that. Huh. It's what's, OK. What's KT, that like? KT won the last Pro League. It's true. It's true. They have a tendency to do that when KT and SKT meet. But League is a different story, man. It's true. It's all SKT in the League of Legends. Well, let's watch this again because it's entertaining. Wow, look at that. He used his Arctic Assault first, yeah. and so that makes it a lot more likely for him to hit that ultimate. And what is just a fantastic engage right there. It doesn't even matter that everybody's bottled up by the Jarvan ult. The Wombo combo is absolutely disgusting. Yeah. And that wasn't even a very dangerous face check for Jin Air. They were playing pretty far back in that bush. They were definitely afraid of that happening, but it was so well executed and timed by KT. I liked how Chaser popped his ult and he was like, oh, uh, see ya. <laughs> I, I, I gotta go, guys. <laughs> Sorry, I, I double parked my horse. All right, well, that's going to be another dead turret for KT. Jin Air not really able to stop any of this. Baron powered and just so much insane damage from someday. KT's patience this game is really good because if we remember back to times where uh, they would try and play Juggermaw, they would get a good early lead. Oh, oh. oh hey, oh, they're going to go in. OK. Uh, that was a little bit premature. Someday taking the lantern to safety. How does? I guess he has to like let go of his axe with one hand to take that lantern. He just like grabs it with his hooks. <laughs> just wraps all four hooks around it. <laughs> I don't know how that works. Well, that was a good engage because KT didn't over pursue it and they got a tower. Yeah, that so. is true. Yeah, they didn't play it too. Oh, J oh, here we go. GBM with a big ult coming in. Can they make a play? Equalizer is down. Wow, look at the damage. Nogne picking up another kill. Everyone's still alive. Someday, will he make it out? A double kill for Nogne as KT wins that fight and someday survives <laughs> well, with like zero health. Hecarim's W is pretty good at making oh, him live and here yeah. he comes back, he's yeah, back. Pick up home guard and teleport back in. Oh, here he comes. Oh, look out. Shay is in trouble. Oh, nope, the turret saved him. <laughs> I think the rest of Jyn is in trouble. They they might just want to, I guess they can't end it right here. Oh, maybe yes, they, they can. can. They've got a wave. I thought they didn't have a wave, but they do. This one's over, guys. 2-0 uh, for KT. And well, you know, I hope you enjoyed that because it's going to be a couple months before we see this team again. So there but you go. It won't be a couple months before we see more Hecarim, though. I don't think so. <laughs> GG. With Spike. And a 32 minute 2 0 KT just literally, literally runs over Janair in game number two. And someday, <laughs> KT, what great patience that game. Wow. And unlike previously when they've had a lead and they've been indecisive, look how well they hit that power spike after farming up yes. that Hecarim. 32 minute game. They power farmed their way and then just drove it home. You know, I feel like KT wasn't aware of how many matches there were in the regular season. They were like, oh, we're just going to pretend we're bad. And then at the last minute, we'll get good again. And <laughs> like, oh, no, it's it's like one week too late. Oh. Well, I, I mean, oh, wow. KT ends their seasons with victories over GE and Jyn Air. So yeah. coming strong in the second half. And Jyn Air continues to have a lot of issues. No, they do. I mean, you, going into that playoff match, against CJ in a, a couple weeks here, you really have to wonder if Jyn is going to be able to pull it off. They've got a lot of time to prepare. Yeah, they and have. And they're going to need to use, the, they're going to need to make the most of it. Yeah, they have about a week and a half. Yeah. Before their next match when they play that best of five against CJ on April 17th. But they've got a hell of a lot of work to do before that happens because they just don't look comfortable in this current meta with what's going on. They're unable to hit timings. 
not too and much. And KT was able just to hold on. Great strategy from KT. Loved seeing the smite, loved seeing the dual lane in mid. Very innovative. We're probably going to see this. A lot more teams trying this in the future. Yeah, I would say.